Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. I was uh, on the Facebook uh, group, uh, one of the amateur radio related Facebook groups that I follow, and uh, a gentleman named Efren Vasquez posted this photograph. Uh, he was talking about pocket antennas, and I was looking at this and I was thinking about this. And uh, if you can't tell what that is, um, I uh, figured out what it was and I uh, experimented with the idea. So let's go down to the bench. And I'll show you what I came up with. So, I'm sure many of you have one of these little guys. BNC to banana post adapter. You can use on the side of your HF radio out in the field and just run wires off of. Handy little device. If you don't have one, get one. They're fun to play with and useful. BNC connector on one end, two banana posts on the other. So you can adapt all kinds of things like on a Hellcraft KX3 or uh, any of the other QXP rigs, QRP rigs. QXP. <laughs> I haven't had enough coffee today. So what I, uh, looking at that other design, what he did was uh, he took two 19-inch pieces of wire and he made a dipole for two meters using these. So I took that idea uh, a little bit further. Now 19 inches um, is a quarter wave on our portion of the two meter band. Well, roughly 19 inches. Um, so what I did was I took an old whip that I had and I cut it down to just under 19 inches and I soldered a, a banana plug onto the end of it. So that totals just about 19 inches. <clears throat> then I took a piece of copper wire, hard, or solid copper wire, and I put a eyelet on the end of it. So the eyelet goes on the ground of this binding post. You could put a wire through that hole that's in the binding post, but it's hard to get it uh, down tight and uh, have it steady. It'll, it'll want to loosen up too easy. So I put that eyelet on there and uh, we screw that down, give it a twist so it's tight, and that's that's fairly fairly tight. It's not going anywhere. And then the binding post we just plug into the red side, which is the center conductor. And we now have a ground plane vertical that you could snap on the top of your HT. Or if you wanted to, you could take this and you could bend it downward like so, and you've kind of got a dipole or a vertical dipole. This would just clear the back of the HT and uh, give you a vertical dipole. With the uh, ground plane vertical configuration, it's going to draw the signal off a little bit in the direction of that ground plane. So you kind of got a little directionality. Um, you could aim this, you know, towards your repeater. So let's say you're camping and you're just right on the fringe of the repeater you want to hit. You can't quite get it with your rubber duck on your HT. You could pull something like this out of your, uh, your go bag, put it together, snap it on the top of the HT and get better range. So how well does it perform? Well, if you recall from my uh, video where I was taking a look at the signal stick antenna, I put the rubber ducks on top of the antenna analyzer and, I, and you saw how hand capacitance strongly affected the performance of uh, rubber ducks when they're on an HT or when they're on the handheld device. And it's, it's hard to get an accurate reading. Well, with a counterpoise on this antenna, We get a pretty good SWR from 1.2 to 1 up to about 1.7 to 1 at the top end of the band. Not bad. But more interestingly, watch that meter. If I bring my hands in and grab a hold of this thing, it's very, very little difference. Because the antenna has a proper counterpoise, um, that's isolating its sensitivity from the handheld device. We're getting a more consistent reading. So I can trust this SWR reading. And if I uh, bring that up to where it's more of an L shape, that SWR drops just slightly, it's, uh, it's pretty good. I mean, we're down to 1.2 to 1, 1.2.1 1 to 1 or something, and up not even to 1.5 to 1 at the top end of the band. So 
um, that match is pretty doggone good. So how does it perform? Well, I got a way to test it. There's one of the repeaters in town that is far enough away from me that when I'm in the house with a rubber duck on the HT, I'm just too noisy into it for people to talk to me. So we're going to we're going to go upstairs, and I'm going to show you my uh, setup to, to range test this configuration. Okay, so to test this antenna, what I'm going to do is I've got my uh, Yezu uh, connected to an attic antenna, tuned into the repeater. And down here I've got Audacity, which is an audio sampling program hooked up through my uh, rig interface, my Duino Vox. Um, and it's going to record the audio coming from the Yezu. Now the repeater is quiet at the moment. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here a little ways, uh, over there a little ways. I'll rotate the camera around, but it's dark. I'll be over in my living room so I'm not too close to the uh, radio. I don't want to swamp its receiver. And I'm going to take my uh, HT on low power. And I know that people have always told me I'm noisy here in the house. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the original rubber duck that came with the Baofeng. And I'm going to key down the repeater ID, say testing, antenna 1. This will be antenna 1. And then I'm going to switch to the MFJ 1715 super duck, super thin duck, and uh, key down the repeater and say my call and testing antenna 2. And then I'm going to clip on <clears throat> the uh, crazy ground plane antenna on the HT and say testing antenna 3. So we'll get all three antennas. So let me rotate the camera around, go over there and we'll uh, and start Audacity and we'll do the test. Channel mode. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Well, that was so noisy. I could almost not even bring up the repeater. All right, we'll switch to the MFJ. Now, again, I'm having trouble even just bringing up the repeater. Now the quarter wave. KB9 RLW, KD9 HAV. And KB9 RLW testing antenna number three for the video. Hi, Norm. That sounds better than the uh, a while ago. You still have a little uh, QRM in there. QRN, noise. Yeah, I know. Um, but I'm filming right now, so I need to go and uh, finish this up. Uh, thanks, KB9RLW. Okay, Kevin, I'll look forward to seeing it on the YouTube channel, kb 9 hv All right, so not only is this the best, <laughs> um, but wow, it's almost, almost full quieting where the other antennas would hardly even bring the repeater up. So I think that's a pretty good result. I'm going to flip the camera back around and show you this on the HT. Okay, so uh, that's impressive. Um, here's the antenna sitting on the HT. It's kind of big and unwieldy. But, you know, for what it would be used for, if you were on the fringe of uh, your repeater range out camping or whatever, and you needed something to just get that much more performance out of your HT, there you go. That would do it right there. So it's a, it's a quarter wave ground plane configuration, or... If you just bend that wire down, you can see it clears my hand. So I can still hold the repeater comfortably and I can still use it. And, uh. Gave me an RLW clear. Yeah, I'm still getting solid into the repeater, whereas with the, even with the MFJ, I was having trouble even bringing it up. So, uh. And this is at half a watt, 500 milliwatts. And that, that repeater, I think, is somewhere around 10 miles away from me. Um, I'll have to look on the map to be sure. In fact, I'll look it up on the map, and I'll put a, a picture of the map right here. So you can see how far away the repeater is from where I'm at. So anyway, there you go. Uh, an interesting antenna idea for an HT. Uh, kind of a half-wave dipole in this configuration. 
and a quarter wave uh, ground plane in that configuration. Who'd have thought? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.